and just lately I got into making assemblage pieces or assemblage depending which pronunciation you prefer and this particular one I covered in a video and I will put a link in my description box down there so you can look up the different steps I took to uh, make this but I had a lot more things left so I went ahead and I made a second one and my intention was absolutely to cover this in a video as well but honestly I did not prepare much I just went into it um, using all the different elements I had and I changed my mind a million times of what I wanted to glue down and the colors and different things and my footage just became so long and editing it became a bit daunting like it would have taken me forever and also the process is so so similar to the one piece I did before which I did cover in the video so I thought I'd just give you a little show and tell on this one and I hope it will still inspire you to give something like this a try because it is a lot of fun because there's really no right or wrong and you can use up all those bits and pieces you have laying around now I think these things work really well in a wooden substrate because all these elements have a bit of weight to them and I also think it is nice to have a focal point something so I uh, chose this vintage image which looks a little bit like a painting and it was sent to me or let me first tell you a little bit more about the box I found this at a thrift store and the people here in the States probably recognize this company they make wooden toys and they often come in these boxes and I've seen them many times in thrift stores empty and you can get them very cheaply and I was lucky enough to find three of these and I will show you what I will be doing with the other two as well now my first assemblage pay piece this one or assemblage whatever it was just a wall decoration like a you know a wooden something you put on the wall and it just turned it over now if you like more compartments like this uh, there's of course um, always a possibility of making it yourself you could use a lid like for instance this one and you could put smaller boxes in it whichever way you like after you've covered all this in paint it will look great so if you cannot find trays like this don't get discouraged there's always another alternative and these dividers can be made out of wood or thick cardboard or boxes like I just showed you anyway I was of course lucky to find this and as I told you I found two more and I will show those to you when they're done in another video so let me explain you a little bit and show you some of the details uh, especially the parts which I did different to the last one uh, to start with I added some gauze you can see two different uh, textured gauze here the typical bandage gauze and I added one strip all along here over the edge and then another one going a little different but more or less the same direction I thought it gave it a nice texture on the edges and also shows up underneath another thing I wanted to change is the picture itself this picture was just um, it wasn't a postcard I think it was a printout I of course sealed it with um, Mod Podge and I added a little bit of my brown pit pen marker around the edges and also some black with my archival ink just to bring it out a little more and to protect it of course so I wanted it to be a little elevated so underneath there is a piece of wood something like this a scrap piece this one was rectangular and that elevated it and then on this side I knew I was going to add some flowers kind of to mimic the ones in this picture but I wanted them to have a raised platform as well so I chose some of these bricks these are just uh, kids toys and they're underneath here I hope you can see it there's four of them they're hold it nice in place so and then of course I added all the little dude heads just like before so in the beginning I didn't think about these brushes but these were actually my old brushes and they got messed up and I thought they fit nicely as this uh, looks a bit painterly and I thought it would be a nice way to have some bigger elements on this side 
too. So I had to remove things uh, I had already glued down to get this all fit the way I like it. And again, I use E6000, which really makes that kind of a change easy because it doesn't glue immediately. But it's really strong when it's once dry because these elements are metal and plastic and all kinds of different things. So let me show you some of the details. So there is a little measuring spoon. This clock is a toy. There's a bottle cap, a safety pin, not safety pin, paper clip. Uh, buttons, a spool, sewing spool. There's a piece of a door. Of course, my brush is there, earring underneath it. More leftover of my jewelry I had before, a spring, a hook. There's a little Barbie shoe and a doorknob and so on. Down here too, some buttons. And I also added some things to the side. There is a paper clip and a little bottle cap. Yeah, and then on this side, I, of course, glued down the piece of wood first, so I knew where to uh, put the rest. But there is an empty space here, which uh, it's nice, I think, because you can see the elements uh, I glued down before you see the wooden block. So there is a little trombone in the corner. I think it's a little Christmas decoration. There is some hardware stuff. There's a bell. There's a little flower made out of shells, game pieces. Um, chains and especially down here are game pieces that's a little bowling pin and there's a piece of a chessboard a monopoly house some more pins there is a tiny little uh, dream catcher I think it was part of an earring piece of a zipper more game pieces gears buttons and I also added little beads all over not too tiny kind of medium size yeah, and then I went ahead and I colored it just like last time. I used a lot of my sprays, but this time I kept it with pink and purples. But I also added some acrylic paints. I experimented with some copper and I found this one. This is a new one. This is called Champagne. It's kind of a very light, um, I don't know what you would call it, light beige, I guess, color. And it's nice. I also added some black, some white. You know, I really, just like last time, messed about quite a bit until I was satisfied. It, and it really took a while. Again, this is not a complicated project by any means. But if you like me, I don't stop until I'm satisfied. And I like it just the way it is. So it took me a while. And on the outside, I added the same colors. I just mixed them kind of up. And I also added this little lace. It's just a little uh, textured lace. I added it all around the edges as well. Yeah, and then I added the flowers. I think some of these are Prima flowers, but I had to change the colors a little bit. I wanted them more or less matching to what's in the picture and the blue resembles this part of her dress. So it took me a little while as well. I think the, the leaves I also had from some other company sorry I'm really bad with that I don't keep track of who makes these things but pretty much 99% of this are just findings just odds and ends I picked up here and there now as I'm into making this of course I'm picking up even more just discarded things around the house in my handyman drawer or at thrift stores we have a really funky one it is not a nice store to go to but they had these big rummage bins and you can find all kinds of things, especially kids' toys and yeah, all kinds of stuff. So it's perfect for this kind of uh, project. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy my little assemblage here. I hope it gives you some ideas, even though you weren't able to see the whole process. And I will be back showing you the other two trays I will be decorating. So I think this is it for today. Of course, there will be some close-up pictures. See you real soon again. Bye-bye for now.